So come into your mountain pose and we'll do our warm up. Then we're going to do a little hip opening, a little balance with hips, and then a little strap work on the floor. Balance may involve the strap also, so do have that close by if you've got one. And if you don't, you can just use your hands. So a tie is fine, you know, just a string, a rope, ribbon, whatever, or a belt. So we're going to start in mountain pose. <clears throat> so hip width apart, feet balanced evenly into the surface beneath you. So get into the base of the toes and heels evenly. Keep those arches lifting so that whole bottom of your foot connects. And then kneecaps toward your thighs, just opening the hamstrings along the back a little by tightening the front of your thighs just a touch. Sitting bones toward the floor to keep those hips and pelvis open, shoulders back and down so that you relax. Shoulder blades always, always toward your waist. Crown to the ceiling, stretching your spine apart, getting that energy beginning to circulate. And breathe. So just come into your yoga frame of reference. Remember, personal practice, do what's right inside, keeping that awareness on your body. And then inhaling, bring the arms out at shoulder level. Stretch way out through your fingertips and up through your crown. Shoulders stay down. Exhale, bringing your hands to your chest, elbows a little back. Stretch those arms way out to the front. Keep the shoulders down. And then exhale the hands behind you. Clasp the fingers and push them toward the floor. Heart toward the ceiling, head stretching back, open through the chest. And then pivot at the hips, coming over, exhaling into your forward bend. Knees may be a little bent. Hands coming up toward the ceiling or your head for your shoulder. Tuck in your chin. Let that back of the neck get a good stretch. And just deepen into that forward bend as far as you want to go. Take a few breaths, just letting that back get released a little bit more. And then when you're ready to come up, Bend your knees slightly, keep your chin in, lift your ribs as you move your sitting bones down and unwind your spine to the top. And then look upward and back as you bring your hands toward the floor <clears throat> and stretch through that chest. And again, keep breathing and lengthening. And on an inhalation, come up. Releasing back to mountain pose, just feeling the circulation through your spine, your back, wherever you're noticing it, maybe shoulders, maybe hips. And then again, inhaling, bring the arms out at shoulder level. Exhale to your heart, stretch forward, and exhale, clasp the other way behind you, so opposite finger outside. And again, lift your chest. Stretch back, open the whole heart, and stretch the spine and the back bend. And on an exhalation, pivot over. And again, as you come into your forward bend, relax. Hands toward the ceiling, head toward the floor. And again, just take a few breaths there, letting things release a little bit more this morning. And hands coming further, maybe toward your head. And then again, wind your way back slowly to the top, feeling your mo bones move into place and into the back bend. Keep stretching the spine, even in the back bend, and lifting the heart. And then inhale upright, release your arms, and again, just take a moment feeling your spine, noticing what's happening in your body, yoga perspective. And then inhale again, arms to the side, shoulder level, turn the palms up and bring them over your shoulders. Hands passed and clasped for our side stretch, bring your arms back by your ears. Sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, reach up through the crown and lean over to the side to open the ribs and stretch that side you're leaning away from. Push the foot you're leaning away from down for a little extra and breathe. Inhale back to the center, switch your other hand in front, and again, pull the arms by your ears, sitting bones down, shoulder blades down, crown up, and move to the opposite side. 
Maximize that side by pushing the foot you're leaning away from down if you'd like that stretch and out through the head and the fingertips. And then inhale back all the way up. Exhale back to mountain pose. Take a moment, feel your sides and your spine getting energized. And we'll do our twist. So remember, you want to keep the spine moving apart. So sitting bones, tailbone down, base of the skull and crown up. Stretch that spine open so it can twist. Inhaling, arms out to the sides, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders, clasp your elbows. Make sure your arms stay back by your ears so the chest is nice and open. Stretch the spine apart as you breathe in and twist either way as you exhale. Knees a little bent if you'd like. Keep the weight on both feet. Stretch up on the breath in and pivot in the twist, exhaling into the forward bend. And as you come down, just keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can. Keep the arms next to your ears as much as you can. And just kind of pull your ribs, upper body toward your legs as much as you'd like. And again, take a few breaths here, just relaxing, feeling that change in your lower back, especially in this version of the forward bend. And then slowly inhale, coming back all the way up. Just feeling elbows back. Get that upper body in your back bend, not your lower back while you're twisted. Stretch back. Inhale up. Exhale to the center. Switch your arms around to balance things out. And again, sitting bones down, crown stretching away from the tailbone. Exhale for the other side. Once more, weight on both feet as evenly as possible as you exhale and come over. And once more, just relax even on the keeping the arms by your ears, pulling in only as body is wanting to do this morning. Just keep breathing and relaxing. And then knees bent as you keep the weight on both feet, working your way up, staying in your twist. And then and being gentle with your low back while you do this back bend. Keep it on the side of your ears, pulling the elbows back away. Heart open. And then again, inhaling, come upright. Exhale to the center. Arms up. Palms away from each other as you bring them to shoulder level. And pivot forward. Keep your back as flat as you can. Keep everything as straight as you can. And then drop into ragdoll. Just hang a moment, breathing, relaxing. If you like that lower back getting stretched, you can bring your arms behind you for a little extra or not, your choice. And then bringing the arms back to the center. Just hang a moment, top of the head as much toward the floor as it wants to be. Keep lifting the sitting bones, letting that back of the legs get a good stretch. We're going to be working them today. And then slowly, one more time, wind your way back into mountain pose and take a moment to center and group. So as you're in mountain pose, we're going to do a little pelvic tilt opening, just very gently. So feet go a little toward the sides, knees going toward your toes. Bend your knees, coming with your hands above your knees for positioning, not support. And then we're going to push the sitting bones back and the chest forward. And then exhale, sitting bones come down and forward as you bring your ribs back and round slightly at your shoulders. So moving the pelvis, pushing it back, coming into the back bend, and then exhaling, tucking under as you come into the forward bend. Moving just that hip and pelvic area, not your knees or your shoulders. So as you're in that position, just a few times, kind of focus on keeping that core nice and supportive and your shoulders relaxed, not putting pressure into your hands. And then as you begin feeling that energy and warmth circulating through the pelvis, go ahead and come back up. 
and into mountain pose. So just feel that whole hip and pelvic area a little bit more warmed up. We're gonna do a balance practice. So bring your chair over if you're gonna be using it. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. And again, have your strap nearby. We may be using that also. So go ahead and make sure it's somewhere accessible if you've got one. We're gonna set up for a balance practice first. So get your outside of your foot parallel to your chair or the outside of your mat. That's gonna be a little inner rotation, remember, on your leg from the hip all the way down. You want your hip bone, your knee, and your ankle and your toes all facing forward. Sitting bones toward the floor, stacked up from your ankle through your shoulder, up crown toward the ceiling so everything's straight. Spread your toes, make sure the base of the toes, not the toes themselves, are connected. So those toes spread out. And then keep lifting through the arch so the whole bottom of your foot connects. Core active so those ribs are in and up and shoulders are relaxed. You can hold your hand just barely on the chair, or you don't have to if you don't want to, just to bear a nice warm up for your balance. So bring the other foot up just a little, or more, or toward your heart, your choice. And just get as centered and grounded as you can. You can keep that foot down, that's perfectly okay. We're gonna circle the ankle to work it because we need to do that so that we keep our balance more effectively, circling both ways and then flex and point a few times as well, getting that whole ankle area stretched out. And then release, back to mountain pose, and switch your chair to the opposite side if you've got the chair. And once again, we're gonna align first. So make sure that that whole leg is centered, knee and toes facing the same direction rotating in from the hips so that outside of your foot is parallel either to your chair or the outside of your mat. Base of the toes connected, arch lifting, that whole bottom of your foot, making sure that it's got a good four-point connection inside and outside of the heel and the toes. Don't grip with the toes. That keeps those base of the toes less connected. Stabilize all the way up through your shoulder, everything stacked for support. And again, sink into your grounded foot and release the other leg. Hold on to your chair if you want to and bring your leg up to whatever leg position you need to. So try to keep this leg that you're bringing up also aligned so that your knee is straight in front of your hip and your ankle is straight down from that. That keeps everything more aligned gives you more stable balance, which you probably noticed I improved when I realigned that leg. And again, just work your ankle, making sure that you get a lot of nice circulation and flexibility in it, flexing, pointing, and releasing. And then we'll go back to the first side, and this time we're gonna use the strap a little bit more challenging. So again, come into that fully grounded position with your foot, nice inner rotation, stacking everything up through your body. Grab your strap if you're gonna use it, and again, sink down into your grounded foot. We're gonna bring that strap under the base of the toes of the opposite foot, and then you can either bend your knee, keeping it again lined up, and then out to the front, or you can keep it straight and just pull on the strap and bring it up out to the front. You can hold on to your chair, of course, if that's appropriate for you. So just kind of push out through the base of the toes and heels evenly, pulling back with the strap so you've got that foot flex. Again, hip bone, knee, ankle, toes, everything lined up. Don't stress and strain in your shoulders. It's not a lot of pressure on the leg just a little bit of support. And then if you're feeling comfortable and balanced there, you can slowly rotate that leg out to the side for a little more hip work. And then again, back to the center and release. And back into mountain pose. Feel that side a little bit more energized and switch your chair if you're using the chair. 
And again, as you come into your mountain pose next to the chair or in the middle of your mat, line everything up. The more things are lined up, the more stable you are in your balance pose. Get that bottom of your foot all situated and grounded. Your whole body stacked for support. Shoulders relaxed. And again, if you're using your strap, you can put it around the base of that other foot and get things aligned and ready. So remember, hip bone, knee, foot, ankle, everything facing forward on that rounded foot. And again, you can keep it down and just bend your knee and bring it up and out. Or you can raise it with your legs straight. Make sure that the hip bone, knee, and ankle are out, toes toward the ceiling, pulling back with that strap on the base of the toes if that's working for you. If you don't have a strap, you can use your fingers and hold your toe. And then when you're ready, either legs slowly down straight or bending it, releasing the strap, and put your strap off to the side. We're going to be using it later. And if you were using your chair, move that out of your way. So coming back to mountain pose, just take a moment, feeling that hip and pelvic area maybe a little bit more warmed up. Take a moment to breathe. And then inhale, arms out, palms toward the ceiling, bring them overhead, look up, palms together. Exhale, hands toward your heart, pivot on over, and hang down into ragdoll. Slide your hands up under your knees, palms pressing in, elbows straight, knees straight, back straight. Get that halfway up stretch, lengthening everything. And then exhale back down. Bring your arms out to the side, stretch. Keep those arms at shoulder level as you pivot back up. And again, overhead, hands together, exhaling back into ragdoll hands up onto your shins we're going to come all the way to the mat hips back on your heels hands at your sides and forehead toward the floor keep your knees together if you want that lower back stretching separate your knees if you want space to breathe Get padding under your forehead if you're not reaching the floor and it's uncomfortable. Pad under your ankle, between your heels and hips, or your calves and thighs if you need a little release. Take a moment and breathe. And then inhaling, sit back upright and bring your legs out to the front. Take a moment and breathe, letting everything align. Hips and shoulders stacked, hips, knees, and ankles pushing forward. Heels out, toes up. Again, make sure that those knees and toes are up as you're seated. So staff position, you can have your hands at your sides, on your legs, your choice. Take a moment to feel your body. And we're going to continue using the strap, so make sure your strap is nearby. Bring your feet to the end of your mat, and we're going to roll down onto our backs. So take a moment, just getting comfortable, a little reclined integration here, making sure that low back sacrum area gets settled onto the mat. Shoulders and shoulder blades down. Take a moment and breathe, feeling how your whole body is straight. Hip bones up toward the ceiling, knees up toward the ceiling, toes up toward the ceiling. So that your whole body is aligned just like in mountain pose. And then we're going to grab our strap. If you don't have a strap or something to use, you can just use your arm and your hand to support you. So press your lower back down. We're going to bend the knees first, bringing the heels in near your hips. Kind of slide your sitting bones toward the heels, getting that back nice and connected down to the mat. Take your strap if you've got it and put it across again the base of the toes and bring that leg up toward the ceiling. If you don't have a strap and you can reach your toes 
you can do that with your hand. Otherwise, just put your hand behind your calf and just allow it to come toward you. So the knee comes toward you, the ankle comes toward you, the toes come toward you. So again, things are lined up. So that may be that little inner rotation at the top of your thigh. So as you breathe, if you've got your strap, just relax all the muscles in your leg and kind of let that leg pull toward your head. If this is comfortable, think about the kneecap going towards the side, tighten the front of the thigh and the quad. That lets that hamstring stretch a little bit more and just allow that leg to keep moving in the direction of your head. If you like that and you want a little bit more, you can straighten the opposite leg. And just hold with either one or both hands on that strap as you keep everything aligned, pulling the leg a little bit further maybe toward you. So just keep the lower back pressing down, keep the shoulders and shoulder blades down. So not a lot of hunching up in the shoulders if you've got the strap or you're reaching for your foot or your leg. And then bring your opposite arm out to the side from the leg that's up and keep the hand on the strap if you've got the strap. And we're gonna bring that leg out while you continue pulling on the base of the toes and let the side of the leg be up toward the ceiling as much as possible. You can take that opposite hand to the hip of the other leg to make sure that that hip isn't coming up and just lower that leg as far out toward the side, toward the floor as it wants to go. And then as you breathe and relax, the muscles will release a little bit if you're allowing them to. And just let that leg grow heavy with gravity coming closer toward the floor. It never needs to get there. That's perfectly okay. If it does, then just kind of keep pulling a little further toward your head with the strap. And again, just breathe and relax, keeping both hips, both sacrum areas down toward the mat. You can still have that Opposite leg bent with the knee up toward the ceiling if that's more comfortable for you. And again, just breathe and relax. Maximizing or minimizing, remember, your body, your choices. And then we're going to release, pulling on the strap as you bring the leg back up to the ceiling to keep everything nice and aligned. And then switch hands to the opposite hand if you've got the strap and bring the other arm out to the side. Or just keep holding on to the back of your leg or your toes if you don't have the strap. And then we're going to exhale and roll the hip onto the side of that other hip as you bring the leg across your body into the twist. Keep your arm and shoulder as much down as possible to maximize the twist as you come into that position. So again, the toes and knees are in the same direction as they were when they were upright as you roll to the side. So the side of your foot ends up toward the floor or on the floor if you go all the way over. The shoulder and arm behind you can stay as much on the floor as your body is willing coming to the twist, or you can keep the leg up in the air to make sure the shoulder and arm stay down if that works better for you. So as much into that twist as your body wants to go. And then rolling back onto your back, pulling on the base of the toes with the strap, coming back up to your upright position. And again, allowing your body to reposition and align. Keep pulling on the base of the toes. And again, bring that leg maybe closer toward your head, one or both hands on the strap, or behind your leg, or on your toes. And again, breathe, relax, let the knee in front of your side tighten a little bit upward, and the back of the hamstring again, stretch maybe a little bit more. And then we're going to release it. You can let go of the strap if you want to, or you can keep holding on. Let your arms go out to the sides and slowly lower the leg. As it gets all the way down, make sure you're completely aligned on your mat, everything mountain pose like, but on the floor. And again, just feel that thigh a little bit more energized, and of course, we have to balance the body. So take a moment to reposition and align, making sure that sitting bone area goes toward your heels, back pressing down, and then bending your knees, bringing those heels in and toward your hips. 
Get your strap if you're using it. Again, put it on the opposite leg, base of the toes, and bring that leg up. If you're not using it, just bring it up, holding on or holding your toes, your choice. So as you get into your situated position, remember knee and toes face you. So that whole leg rotates inward for alignment. Alignment is essential if you're going to effectively practice your yoga. And again, you can keep this knee bent or you can straighten it out and pull that whole leg that's extended towards the ceiling toward your head. So once more, kneecap toward your thigh, thigh tightening, helping to release the hamstring as you pull into that stretch for the back of your leg. And again, shoulders, shoulder blades down, rest of your body connecting as much toward the mat as feels comfortable for you, bringing that whole leg toward your head as far as it wants to go. Take a breath. Exhale and relax. Some people are very stretched out. You may get that leg coming closer, or it may stay just upright, or maybe not even straight. Just do what's right for your body and let things relax. That's the key to stretching in yoga. And again, switching that strap into your hand with your leg. We're going to bring it out to the side or holding on with your hand if you don't have the strap. Keep pulling on the toes toward your body, other arm out to the side to give you a little bit of connection, making sure that the hip that you're moving away from doesn't go up. So you can bring that hand to your hip if that helps you keep it down. So the side of your leg and foot are up toward the ceiling on that leg that's lowering, and the other hip is staying as far toward the mat as you can keep it. The leg again will relax and release when you let it, and gravity will pull it further if it's appropriate for you. Don't force it. Don't strain your muscles. Relax. When you relax, things go a little further sometimes, but it doesn't have to. So do what's right for your body. Breathing, exhaling, releasing tension, letting things go. Only as far as your body needs and wants them to this morning. And again, you can have that other opposite arm out to the side if that helps you keep your position better. Knee and toes up toward the ceiling on that extended out leg. And then when you're ready, or the knee can stay bent on that opposite leg too. And then when you're ready, bring the leg back up, again, pulling on the base of the toes with the strap or pulling on the back of your leg a little bit to keep things aligned. Back pressing down, switch hands, other arm out to the side. And again, we're rolling all the way to the side of the hip with the inside of that leg and foot coming toward the floor, coming into your twist here. So keep pulling a little bit on the strap to bring the leg toward your head and let it go as far toward the floor as it wants. Shoulder, shoulder blade down on that arm behind you. Remember, the leg doesn't need to go to the floor if you wanna keep the shoulder down, or you can bring that leg all the way to the floor and see how far your arm is toward the mat, toward the floor, your choice. Turn and look toward the arm behind you for that neck and shoulder twist if you love it. And again, just breathe into it. Do what's right for your body in whatever position your body needs this morning for this twist. And then exhaling and releasing, roll back onto your back, keeping that leg upright, pulling on the strap if you've got it. And again, as you get everything resituated straight on your mat, you can pull a little bit more on that base of the toes with the strap or the back of your leg, keeping things as straight as you can coming into a little bit more stretch if that's working for you today. And then when you're ready to release, either holding onto the strap or your leg or releasing everything, just heel first, allowing that leg to slowly release to the mat. And again, as you get all the way down into the corpse position on your mat, just allow your body to relax and move your strap to the side. Hip bones up toward the ceiling. 
shoulders and shoulder blades down. Press your low back down, hands palms down near your hips, and bend your knees, heels in, knees straight up to the ceiling. So make sure everything's aligned, same as before. Kneecaps and ankles and heels aligned. Going to keep the hands palms down at your sides. Press your sacrum lower back down and bring your knees up. And then extend your legs up to the ceiling. Press the heels up. And then slowly, either one leg at a time or both legs together, and you can bring your arms out to the side if you need for balance. Lower the legs all the way back down to the mat. A little abdominal work for this morning. And then relax completely. And then again, press your back down. Hands, palms down at your sides. Bring those heels back in. So push your sitting bones slightly toward your heels. Get your whole lower back connected. And then lifting your hip bones, bring them up, rolling onto your shoulder blades. You can clasp your hands under your hips or you can keep them palms down and lift your hips maybe a little higher. Press into the hands and arms if you've got them clasped and worked up onto the tops of your shoulder blades or your shoulders, keeping your head, not your neck, on the mat. Little bridge position, lifting the hips. So hips, knees, and ankles still should be in alignment. And then releasing your hands, release your shoulders, shoulder blades down, back ribs down, and spine back to the floor. Just take a moment, feeling that circulation. And then one more time, press the back down, inhale, hips lifting toward the ceiling, rolling onto your shoulder blades. If you clasp your hands, do it the opposite way, pressing down into your hands and arms, moving up onto the tops of your shoulders more, if that works for you, or hands can stay at your sides, palms down. And again, lift through the hips, back of the head connecting, not your neck, shoulders supporting you, feet supporting you, knees straight up toward the ceiling. And again, releasing your hands, your shoulders, your shoulder blades, your ribs, your spine, everything back to the mat. Take a moment, feeling the circulation, turning your hands, palms up, extending your legs out, or keeping them bent if that's better for your back, coming into your relaxation posture for a final meditative moment. So just breathe deep. Exhale, let your body sink. And allow your body to release any stress or tension anywhere, shoulders, midsection, or hips and pelvis which we used a lot today. So let it release your whole lower body, just growing heavy. Shoulders relaxing, whole body sinking deeper as you close your eyes and focus inward. Deep breaths, exhaling and relaxing. And as your body releases into that earth embrace, just let it go. No need to think about it. And as other thoughts come to your mind, just let them go as well. No need to think of the past or anticipate the future. Just let your mind drift and your body sink. Letting awareness release your body and your mind. Thoughts drifting away as easily as your breath. And just let your awareness turn inward. Find the peace within and let it fill you. Fill your mind with peace. Your body with peace. Just being peace.
And then, of course, staying in your relaxation if you prefer to. Or bringing energy and awareness back to the moment, back to your body, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Just breathe deeply, begin moving your body slowly and gently. When you're ready for that yoga hug of appreciation, press your back down, pull your heels in, and bring your knees toward your heart. Wrap your arms around if you'd like. Let your body know you appreciate its work in yoga today and its work for you every day. And when you're ready to release, come to your seated position and prepare for whatever's ahead for the rest of the day and the week ahead. Thanks for joining me this morning.